Um, but to also kind of discuss what went on with the debates and how you you guys ask you guys how you perceived what happened and give us our perspective as to what we thought what we thought happened. Um, and first of all, <laughs> let me start off. Tom, <laughs> Tom Delaney is a piece of shit. And I, I hope I don't get shut down for that, but he's vile. Yeah. He's vile and he needs to go. And I made a poll on Twitter and let's let me look at it right now. I don't know if you can put it up, Johnny, mm -hmm. but I didn't um, take it. Uh, you haven't taken it. I put who should drop out. <laughs> and 66 percent say Tom Delaney, 13 percent say Beto O'Rourke, 13 percent say Hickenlooper and 8 percent say Steve Bullock. Those are the choices I put because I don't know if you agree with me, but to me, those are the four that just just did horrible and they need to go. Okay. A lot of people went Delaney okay. because they they're not crazy about Delaney. What was interesting to me is right out of the gate, they're still playing this game. And this is the Democratic Party, how stupid they are, most of them, the majority of them. They're still trying to position themselves as the anti-Bernie candidate. From the get-go, when the bell rang to him, Ryan, mm. Hickenlooper, Bullock, all these guys, you know what I'm saying? It's And then they try to go after him. They're, they're almost arguing like Republicans up there. When Delaney mm. was arguing at arguing with Bernie, it was almost he was using right-wing talking points. Oh, you're not, you know, and, and when Bernie said, it's not a business, one of the best friggin' lines of the like, Marianne Williamson, awesome job tonight. Didn't completely hit a home run on that last closing, but she yeah. did pretty good. Yeah, Marianne Williamson, um, let's talk about Marianne Williamson. Marianne Williamson had great things to say in, in, in reference to just... Like every, any time a politician gave something that was very like pol poli politician like, she just came back with a very real argument, especially, especially on reparations. I mean, Elizabeth Warren has a plan for reparations, but look at how Marion Williamson answered that. And and she killed it on reparations. And I think a lot of people were dismissing her, like we were saying before the show. If you guys had a chance to see it, and now it's gone. But yeah, <laughs> it's in it's in the freaking emptiness. The black hole took our fucking. Uh, feet. Tomorrow we're just gonna make sure we're simultaneously recording that. Um, but we like I was saying how a lot of people dismiss her, but she had a plan on reparations, and today she kind of pretty much like ran on that. Especially of course, this being Flint, Michigan, and. The one thing that I would criticize about her, which is a big one for me, which is like a huge issue for me, is Medicare for all. She doesn't seem to be for Medicare for all. And that's something that I think hurt her um, with a lot of progressives. But I will give credit or credits to regarding the reparations and regarding how she's focusing on on combating this whole thing, not just through policy, but also through changing our mindset, which I think is, is something unique that she's done. Yeah, I thought uh, she did a good job, too, as well. And that's one issue that I can't stand and whatnot. But she really did a lot better tonight, even when she said, I guarantee you that what happened in Flint, Michigan wouldn't happen in my neighborhood. And she got a really big standing uh, ovation. And she also talked about uh, environmental you know, issues, too, as well. I'm sorry. Um, no, I just wanted to say um, I knew that this whole thing was going to be about Elizabeth Warren again. Yeah. I knew that they, it was it was going to be about making Elizabeth Warren look good, and and that's Enter pretty Bullock. much <laughs> and that's pretty much what happened. Yeah, Bullock and um, John Delaney. So the media is going to say that Elizabeth Warren, sh her mo moment was with John. Delaney. I disagree. I think Bernie Sanders' moment was with John Delaney when John Delaney. Uh, said, I, remember that I part. think he said, um, what did he say? When he when he said, why don't you be realistic and tell the people, like, don't sell the people a, fan, no. a fairy tale, that part? I think I tweeted about it. Let's see. Um, Check your tweets. I, I'm, I'm going to say, while she's looking for her tweets, that I thought today the Bullock was in there because of gravel just to be a sacrificial lamb to make Elizabeth Warren look good. Yeah. Johnny actually called it. Johnny said he was like, ah. Johnny, did you want to read a tweet up there? Yeah, I just You're good? something. Oh, I was going to hand you my mic. Okay, hold on. Um, I, oh, yeah. Okay, so <coughs> when they were talking about health care, um, that's what it was. Wait, when they were talking about health care, I felt like he, he kept going at it like, no, we need a realistic form of health care. And then he even tweeted while he was, or he obviously didn't tweet, but he's, his people tweeted while he was... Uh, Talk, uh, debating Bernie Sanders tweeted like unlike Senator Sanders we have realistic expectations about health care and people want to keep their 
uh, their doctors, they love their private insurance companies. And he got like completely, completely destroyed over that. People don't want to keep their insurance companies. They want to keep their doctors. And under Bernie Sanders' plan, they can keep their doctors. And Bernie Sanders was the one that was like, I wrote the damn bill. <laughs> he wrote the damn bill. And like that was to me Bernie's ne- line of the night. Like, I wrote the bill. Yeah. Like, I wrote the bill. I wrote the bill. Bernie, I wrote the damn Bill Sanders. I mean, like that that was it for me. And I think I think Delaney just made himself look like a freaking idiot, like just a freaking like disgusting, completely disconnected from people, completely just someone that doesn't get it, that doesn't get it. That is is the epitome of trash of that's the political the politicians in in um in in dc and we were there we saw him when he was trying to uh okay regime change wars do you remember oh yeah at the veterans caucus he was I he mean, was hey, and so this, is so is amy klobuchar and she still has course. that and pete Buttigieg, you caught him in that one time it's like we need to do what we need to do to defend yes. america that's code for hey i'll do what the hell i want i'll bomb whoever i want when i want if it's in my way uh yeah. can i read my tweet of course real quick um i know i i know who Tom Delaney? I, I you put met my tweet John. up, Johnny, or no? I don't know he was why. Just looking at he's it. so irrelevant. <laughs> he changes my his one, name. My my one, he is. And let me tell you, they need these people need to go. Okay, so I put something tonight. Johnny was messing with it. Suppression, right there. There you go. Oh, your tweet about our stuff. Yes, it says suppression is free, uh, of uh, suppression of speech is straight up fascism. Period. And that's what YouTube and Facebook did tonight under the Fair Use Act. We are allowed to stream these debates with commentary. We're in the corner of the feed the whole time with signs commentating. Unjust. And I just want to say some people uh, wrote back. We got some retweets there. He says, again, with this BS, YouTube needs to go to copyright school. That's what yeah. Hoot Hoot Burns wrote. Uh, and then one other person, I'm just going to get off it real quick and let you get into more commentary on what happened on the debates because thank God for Fiorella kind of pain. I was so upset. It's like I could barely even watch it. It's a pasta. What did you expect less? You're in their scopes, brother. We're in their scopes now, and therefore they want to shut us down. And let's talk about Bullock and Warren, because I kind of started talking about Warren, right? Um, I feel like Bullock and Delaney and all these people are there <laughs> to make her look good. Because, I mean, yeah. by by all accounts, you put her next to these idiots. She looks amazing compared to them. I mean, she looks she looks like she, you know, she can at, she's at least a rational person. And that's the last thing, actually, we, re- we it's good because we're switch, like moving the overtone window. But really, are we? Because now we're we're going to OK someone like Elizabeth Warren, who's still better, but she's ultimately still part of the same status quo, yeah. still pro regime change. She was talking about still talking about keeping these nuclear weapons, um, still talking about uh, she's talking about Medicare for all. But really, what is it going to mean once she gets in office? I don't trust that talking about her uh, student loan plan. It's not what Bernie Sanders has. It's okay. It's almost like she's just like the the fake version of Coke, like the the off brand. She's like uh, RC Cola or like check. (laughs) Uh, But here's the thing, too, as well. Oh, they might demonetize us for saying check. Um, Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Guess what? Elizabeth Warren can't beat Donald Trump. anyway. That's the biggest thing. Get that through your head. It's never going to happen. When she finally put the knife in her back was when she refused to go on Fox News. Done. I'm sorry. You can sit there and try to shun people. Maybe you want to try to win another election if only 50% of the people vote again, and then you might have a chance. But just an awful strategy. Uh, And she put the knife in her back right there as well. She doesn't have a chance. She's flip-flop all over the place. And even though she did well tonight, and you could see that people are are really paying attention to these polls, because a lot of candidates didn't only attack Bernie. They attacked Elizabeth, too. They went after her. Exactly. So I think a lot of these uh, candidates, like Delaney, like Bullock, they threw their Hail Mary, and it, it was an incomplete, and hopefully they're done. Right. And I think that, I mean, it, right now it might look good that they're doing that, that at least Bernie and Elizabeth Warren are are being the ones attacked. But really, what what's going to happen is, even though they're the ones that are being quote-unquote attacked. Who is that? I don't know who that is. <laughs> I'm tr- Even I'm though they're answering. the ones that are being a quote unquote attacked, um, they were, it's going to make it more difficult for Bernie when she is 
they're equating her to him because it's going to give people the option to go, oh, maybe we'll just, you know, it's okay. We'll just take her. And that's actually what we don't want at all. It seems like you were called from a chat. I like, was. My, yeah. my cousin's trying to call me. I just told him that we're streaming live. <laughs> he, I guess he wants to talk to me right now. So, yeah. Sorry, Natty. I love you, brother, cousin. But uh, right now we have uh, this commentating going on. So Another thing that they talked about, Pasta, was when Bernie Sanders, um, they asked Bernie Sanders right away. This is one of the shit questions they asked Bernie Sanders. Uh, the U.S. needs to stop being the world police. Donald Trump said the same thing, and you said the same thing. How do we trust you when you both are saying the same things and bernie said trump is a pathological liar yeah. i tell the truth i mean what more do you want the guy to say i mean okay. really i gotta say this now just guys listen to that question get this sense of where the democratic party is you're a non-interventionist just like donald trump how can anybody tell you apart the <laughs> fact that he's a non-interventionist makes him like Donald Trump, and a, I, I don't, right. I don't get it. That can tell you where the media is, ladies and gentlemen. Why they're shutting this down, and we don't need a pro-war media streaming these debates and having sole possession where they don't share it with anybody else. And the Democratic Party is a war hawk, neo freaking con party, just like their opposers in the Republican Party. That was a disgusting question because it's like if listen if you're for peace if you're a progressive if you're a liberal you should be for you should be anti-war right but but they're not the majority of the democrats are pro war ryan delaney klobuchar even elizabeth warren tonight pro war the only two people who are anti war on that stage marianne williamson bernie sanders yeah exactly and i think it also just speaks to the fact that um that Bernie Sanders is is still saying the same thing he's been saying forever. Um, he's not going to change. He's still repeating. We need to make at the very end. He was still repeating. We need to make this is about us versus a one percent. We need we need the economy to work for us versus a one percent. Warren has sort of adopted that stance, and I like again a lot of people see that as a good thing, and it could be a good thing. But to me, I see that as a danger because I see. People being like, oh, okay, well, she's not that bad. Let's yeah. jump onto her. Let's go on and her. that's just, it's just, first of all, she wouldn't win. Second of all, it's not the real thing. It's not really the real thing. And I think um, I'm seeing a lot of uh, people who are, who are like pro Bernie Warren, like, oh, they could, there couldn't be a more perfect match. Some, some guy on Twitter like posted that and he's getting like, he's getting like punnelled yeah. on his mentions. He's getting, he's getting. <laughs> Like he's getting ratioed because no, I'm sorry. Like stop, stop trying to make that happen. And I think um, a lot of people are trying to make that happen, and it worries me because I don't really see that being the the case. I don't really see that being the solution to beating Donald Trump at all. And so. uh, I want to thank all you guys who just jumped in. You guys have sent so much love, saying anything you can do to help. Uh, even with the with the with the combo couch in general, it makes me mm. feel like I'm part of something bigger than just the combo couch. That I'm no, a part of a group of. Thank you so much. Civilian journalists, which was what we needed. A lot of people, I love that phrase. We are civilian journalists. We have every right to help our citizens, our fellow citizens, keep informed and know what's going on. So we will not stop. And thank for all of you who've sent us so many emails on so many different topics to throw your opinions in there. You, If you watch the show, you'll see a lot of your opinions thrown in there because we're not two egotistical maniacs and neither is Johnny Tsunami. We're open and, and wondering, we're humbled and we'll look at everything you give us. We might not agree with it, but we'll definitely look at it. Oh, yeah. And we won't censor anybody. We won't give anybody the Heisman. We love our people and we, we love the fact that you send us so much information, so much love and so much help. Some of the messages I'm getting right now, guys, thank you. It's very, very touching. I'm sorry for losing it. I just felt overwhelmed over here. Uh, but thank you so much. What did you think about Peter Buttigieg? Who? Peter Buttigieg. But once again, well, Buttig Buttigieg got lucky today because he really didn't get beat up like Swalwell attacked him last time because he had no answer for when Swalwell told him, you should have just fired the chief, mm -hmm. okay? And he was sitting there, he looked at Swalwell disgustingly, he looked down and let it go. It was a big shot on his chin. But tonight mm -hmm. he did his platitudes, he got his thing. Remember I said last time he said in the debate, it's gotta be cheaper not just to go to college, it's gotta be cheaper to not go to college. No policy, platitude as fuck, but people love it. He said it again tonight, I can't, what was the platitude line he said tonight? I can't, I can't even remember. But he hit us with his platitudes, and then he got his applause. Yeah. Some yeah. virtue signaling going on. He was talking there. about, what was he talking about? Um, well, he was asked a question about his, how his handling of, you know, 
the his community basically the question that he should be asked and he completely didn't answer it. <laughs> he was like, well, you know, we need, we need to come together. And yeah. I have, he completely lied, actually. He said that, you know, I've helped um, bring families of color together. I've helped communities uh, that were poor. He actually helped gentrify these communities. So he pretty much blatantly lied. Yeah. Um, and I hate his accountability with no action. It's, it's my yeah. fault. I let it happen. Things were wrong. And even Swalwell, a 29-year-old guy or whatever, he says, then fire the chief, dumbass. Yeah. Do something. We don't want to hear. We don't want to hear your sympathy. We want to see actions. That's why some of this debate just drives me crazy all the time. Like, hey, I know these are pressing issues, but let's get some solution to these issues. Not just say it's terrible, it's awful. Mm -hmm. Not how many times you can tell us that Donald Trump is a racist or this and that. Give me your solutions, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Stop praying off people's fears. Terrible. Um, who do you think won? Today. I think Marianne Williamson did well for herself. I think that Pete Buttigieg did well for himself. I don't think that Beto made enough of an impact, to, even though he got those cheesy yeah. uh, haircuts. But once again, it was miles for, I think the biggest leap was for Marianne Williamson. Me and Johnny got a little upset at the very end when she didn't she didn't quite she connect didn't on the right it. hand yeah. or the cross coming in her, in her closing speech. Mm -hmm. But that was great. I think Buttigieg didn't get enough attached, attacked and he said his, his platitudes. I don't think any of the outsiders made a made a statement big enough to move on bullock should have never been there <laughs> delaney it's time for you to go what gobachar it's time for you to go yeah, tim ryan it's time for you to go Hicken, forget, Luper, it's exists. time for you to go go and um it just yeah like i i honestly forgot tim ryan was even there <laughs> to be honest i completely forget he even exists i think um marion williamson definitely yeah. absolutely was a kind of strong contender for this debate like yeah. she, a lot of people are like holy shit like you know she kind of did that in the last time but this time she got more time to speak and she was kind of more more yeah. uh she aggressive was good with it. yeah and then she was able to like say things more and especially her answer either. on reparations yeah um i know elizabeth warren was trying to milk the whole reparation thing i think the media the mainstream media is going to say elizabeth warren did amazing um and they're gonna mock Marion Williamson, but in reality, Marion Williamson actually was the one that stood out to people, and we're probably gonna see that reflected on Google. Yeah. Um, and I think Bernie Sanders again remained the center, the yeah. strong contender. They were all arguing about Medicare for all. Who wrote the damn bill? Bernie Sanders did. Yeah. And and without him, we wouldn't even be having this conversation because guess when they all came into Medicare for all. 2017 is yeah. when Elizabeth Warren started talking about that. Bernie Sanders has been talking about that since 1971. So let's be real here. Yeah. Who, it's just pie really in the sky, dominated? fam. Last, it was 2016, it was pie in the sky for all these people. And now it's their, their center sudden, talking piece. Yeah, and they all revolved, whether they were arguing against it or whether yeah. they were arguing for it, they all used Bernie Sanders for popularity, for momentum, whatever you want to freaking call it, which mm -hmm. is why I'm not accepting any of them besides Bernie Sanders, because you know what? Like, that's bullshit. You guys yeah. weren't even for it, including Warren. So let's well, be real. I, I also got to say the winners are Bernie Sanders, too, as well, because he closed right. like a like Bernie Sanders. Nobody can close like Bernie Sanders <laughs> down the stretch. Nobody's stronger. Yeah. He's charging at the wire for all you horse racing fans out there. I don't watch it anymore, but charging at the wire was like secretary. It means he's at this finish line, but he's still gaining momentum and he's still picking up speed. And I feel that way when I hear Bernie, when he was coming down, we got to create, and, and you might've heard it before. You might've heard it 10 times, mm -hmm. but it, when Bernie says it, he still just builds the momentum, builds the momentum, boom. Elizabeth Warren did enough where she didn't get attacked. She didn't get in trouble. And guess what, fam? We said this, no Tulsi Gabbard on stage. Be careful, watch out for Klobuchar, watch out maybe for Delaney, watch out for Williamson going after uh, Elizabeth Warren, but the, but the patsy, the scapegoat, the whatever he is, Tim Bullock, who wasn't even supposed to be in this thing, got into the conversation, Johnny I called it. He goes, dude, I feel like he was in this debate just for this fucking moment right here so Elizabeth Warren could look strong on foreign policy, and she did. And the, both of these guys, Warren and Sanders, they didn't get the bullets that could have taken them down or hurt them. They move on nicely to the next round. Yeah, and that pisses me off because Elizabeth Warren has horrible foreign policy. Terrible. 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 I mean, she is pro-war as can be. She said Israel had the right to bomb people in Gaza. I yeah. spoke about it in a video I did that I'm going to release. I mean, she she is terrible, um, especially in Palestinian rights. Yeah. And um, 
you know, I just think like it's just it's like it's it's like all set up to make her look good. And, yeah. you know, it did. And like so I think honestly, like Marianne, uh, Bernie, Elizabeth, I think Bernie, of course, dominates because he's a center. Marianne's like the new kid on the block that totally like knocked it out of the park for a lot of people, impressed them. Yeah. And Elizabeth Warren, of course, had some great moments in there as well. But I think Tim Ryan was only relevant when Bernie Sanders told him I wrote the damn bell. So yeah. that. <laughs> That's it. Every, I, it's funny because everybody else is pretty much in agreement of who should drop out and it should be all those. Idiots. It will. And I don't think they'll have the money or the time and, and the endurance to make it to the next I mean, the next debates are really about. difficult. Let's talk about tomorrow stuff. night. You have enough about tonight. Can we talk about tomorrow? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So tomorrow, what are you expecting? Um, tomorrow, I'm expecting Kamala Harris to do her whole platitude thing. And then I'm going to expect Tulsi Gabbard to come after her pretty much and corner her and i'm hoping she can do that because they're really unfair with tulsi yeah so i really don't know how do you they're think gonna she has the to skills like, tulsi do you think she has the knowledge absolutely do you think she did enough opposition opposition research for this i don't know i hope so maybe but we'll <laughs> see um yeah what but about joe biden is joe biden done <laughs> oh Listen, I, guys ladies and gentlemen <laughs> i don't know how long this joe biden charade can last this guy does not want to be there he's the lead he reminded me of Mueller. Mueller reminded me of joe i start to feel bad no. for these two warmongers don't insult Mueller like that <laughs> if you didn't see Mueller in that last friggin testimony oh my god in that last hearing <laughs> that was terrible that's beyond my purview i would love it if, if joe biden said yesterday for one of those answers i'm sorry but that's beyond my purview Joe, wake up. You're at the debate, not the... Hey. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he, he, there's only a matter of time before this guy goes away. Yeah. Uh, he says tomorrow he's going to fight back more. Yeah. So let's hope he fights back and makes himself look like an asshole. You know? Maybe in the middle of the debate he can go over and kiss Kamala on the back of the <laughs> neck or something like that. Ew. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, Joe. Ah, yeah, that's a bunch of malarkey, let me tell you that. I know we don't have that, so I just did that. But um, <laughs> So we have Kamala. We have Tulsi. We have Joe Biden tomorrow. Those are the three to really work for. Mm -hmm. We have Andrew Yang. Will Andrew Yang make a splash? The Yang Gang. Yeah. I know you're out there, Yang Gang. Are you guys going to come back and you're going to come back strong? Yes or no? I, I hope so. I feel bad. I mean, I don't agree with his uh, immigration policy. Let's be real, because yeah. I feel like it's a little bit nationalistic. But I do think that the, the um, idea of um, universal basic income should be talked about. I actually watched this documentary on Vice. Johnny saw it with me when we were home. Um, how what, how we're going to deal with automation. And, and I I am the, of the kind of mindset that we, we can't just like go boycott every automation industry because we're not going to be able to beat technology. Yeah. Technology is advancing at a, a much faster pace than we will ever be able to combat it. It's been, I mean, this this we could go back to the times during the Industrial Revolution and see that there was no way to stop it. We're, we're, we're going to have to deal with this. And so I think the idea of universal basic income should be discussed. But I just feel like he didn't even get a chance and he wasn't even aggressive enough. And he's a policy policy guy. So he's not the kind of guy that's even going to like go and pretend to speak in platitudes. You know, he's a tech guy, straight to the point, logical guy. Sometimes that just doesn't work with the American people. Unfortunately, like I was saying, a lot of people like to hear all the platitude BS. Um, and that's how America is, you guys. And unfortunately, we're going to have to understand that that's how they work. That's why people like Kamala Harris were coming out on top because of things like that. And I think tomorrow, though, if, if there is enough, if there is enough attack from Tulsi, I think we're going to see her kind of fall apart a little bit. I think she's still going to try to use Joe Biden as a sort of like punching You think she's going to do that again with Tulsi, uh, with Tulsi on the stage, knowing that Tulsi's gone after her three times? Wow, she would have some. She got a lot of guts if that really happened. I mean, really who else happened. are they? Everybody in every debate, they have a punching bag. Yeah. Okay. So they used like Tom Delaney. Uh, they used Hickenlooper. Yeah. Tim Ryan as punch, punching bags. They're gonna use Joe Biden as a punching bag. They tried to, you know, ask Bernie to tough questions, but they they can't do that to Bernie because Bernie is always prepared and he knows exactly what he's talking about. He doesn't have to do the platitude thing. But I think as far as as far as the punching bag, it's going to be Joe Biden again. He tomorrow. is. You no, know, he looks like a punching bag. Did I say that out loud? No, I'm sorry, Joe. You look great. That's a bunch <laughs> of malarkey and stuff. Uh, so, fam, we're going to try it again tomorrow. We're not going to sit we down. Are. Uh, I just got a text from a lawyer late up night. Just said, hey, what's going on? To explain to him. Uh, so once again, if you can come to our Patreon, uh, there's a couple Patreons tonight. Thank you so much. 
Give two dollars. Give three dollars. Please help. Do you want to read some of the comments? Uh, independent media and where? I didn't even on read. On Facebook. We uh, have. Don't you have, we have it up? Like Forty people watching. Okay, let me leave shout outs. I'm so sorry, yeah. guys, because here I am, bad boy pasta, not even paying attention to his his peeps. Forty one people out there. When you could be watching other stuff, you're watching us. <laughs> Um, yeah. So quick shout outs. Fiorella Isabel is watching. Thank you so much, Fiorella. Uh, Betty Bell. You didn't like that joke? No. Jenny Colby, Gilbert <laughs> Flores. <laughs> I was reading. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ashley New Hampshire and Glenn J. Um, a lawyer Ash just contacted us back and said, email me. Let's get into what's going on. Um, <laughs> it's not Ashley New Hampshire. It's Ashley Nicole. But <laughs> Absol Ashley from New Hampshire, Nicole. <laughs> She's not um, from New Hampshire. <laughs> Oh I don't God, think she's from New Hampshire, but it's You're NH. so funny. Sorry, Ashley. Um. Uh, so we're going to try again tomorrow. We're going to try, we uh, we're gonna try every avenue we can. We're going to try maybe Twitter. We're going to try maybe Facebook again. We're, we're going to try Twitch. Gonna try a lot. Twitch. Of, I, know, I know people were telling me that we should try Twitch, and I've never tried it before, but I'm willing to try it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have to expand as many platforms as possible because you guys, like, this is going to keep happening, not yeah. just to us, but to multiple people, especially, you know, we don't even have net neutrality. Yeah. You know, we did a net neutrality stream not that long ago where it was like a 24 hour stream, was it? Where different people were coming in. We were all talking about the future of media and the future of Internet. And it, it's important that we all, you know, stand together and find ways to create our own avenues because we're relying right now on a platform that is Facebook that is is not reliable. I yeah. mean, they, they are giving away our information. We just saw what happened with Citibank and, yeah. and the hacking. It can happen with Facebook. I, I yeah. don't recommend, you know, you messaging crazy things over Messenger because uh, that's probably hacked too. Um, yeah, no, they should really, and not by the Russians, but by, by the, the Americans. No, they, they've been selling all our information to Cambridge Analytica. Yeah. They did it in the last election. People don't talk about it. They point the finger to the Russians. Meanwhile, Zuckerberg took our privacy, took our information, our personal mm -hmm. information, and sold it. Sold it. Yeah. And then denied it. I mean, why does this guy get to decide what freedom of speech is? Yeah. Please, ladies and gentlemen, uh, like I said, Anything you can do to get the back behind us, we would appreciate it because I want to take these people down because when they shut it down independent media, they suppress our voice. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we can't allow that to happen anymore. Yeah. When they buy these politicians, they suppress our voice. All right? Don't let them suppress our voice anymore. We want to speak for you. We want to continue to do this. Please help us out. I, that's all I can say, guys. I love you guys. I am so yes. overwhelmed and humbled by you guys following us and being able to do this stuff. But please don't let them shut us down because our voice is important because it's your voice. Yeah, exactly. And we need you guys. And, you know, you guys need us in the way where, you know, we're going to talk about things that other people don't want to talk about. And we were talking about in the original live stream how wouldn't it be great if we could just ask questions, if the progressive media could just ask questions. If we could run a debate. If we could run a debate. Yeah. The, the questions that we would ask, yeah. I mean, we would ask hard questions. Mm. We wouldn't just ask like... Without saying Donald Trump's name. <laughs> without saying Donald Trump's name. Please tell me how you'll fix immigration and what the cause of immigration really is. Right. And I guarantee you that probably 98% of people will get that question. Can I answer wrong. it like Bernie? Well, I will not say anything about the most horrible president in modern times in modern stick, history in modern history i will i will stick to the point and that is bernie tonight did have an opportunity fam i don't want to point it out i know you're gonna get mad at me but he said it was a regional problem again oh he's i a wish he would have hit on that and I, we didn't get that from marianne williamson but i would really like for somebody to say hey guys maybe they're coming here because we, we keep, keep going there yeah yeah Hmm. And, you know, I things that make you go. Hmm. I'm still looking to go to Texas. I'm still looking to go to Texas and talk to people there. So hopefully my friend Carlos Martinez can help me out with that. Um, I'm looking to go to Vegas. So help me next. Out. Uh, the next debates will be in September. And we are strongly looking to actually go and attend them. Yes. So yes. that is that is the goal for next time in September. Hopefully we can do that. And yeah. Yeah. So, again, you guys, we're going to try again tomorrow. Hopefully, we don't get shut down. If you guys have any suggestions into how Help. to avoid that, Email please us. let us know. Message us. Comment below. But we're basically going to have to talk a little bit during it because otherwise, they're just going to yeah. do, do it Yeah. I mean, we again. thought we... And that's the thing. Like, if, if, if this is considered commentating for the hearing it's impaired... It's not. No, it's not. I'm sorry. It is. It's not. It's a form, of, it's a form of commentating in my mind. 
Um, in your mind. And once again, I think it's a gray area, though, but it really is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't want to have a conversation over a conversation. Yeah. But we know we have dolphin sounds. We have turkey talk. <laughs> we have other things we could do. You got something? That's right. Oh, there you go. See? We'll, we'll get a couple of those tomorrow going on and stuff and, <laughs> and, and see what they say. I mean, regardless, yeah. whatever it is, uh, you know, they shut down David Pakman, I heard tonight, and he was commentating over the whole thing. It really isn't about their laws. It's about who's got the most views. Yep. And them <laughs> taking the money and sending it over to CNN. The, the corporate media has to make their money, and they do that by suppressing and our voice. You know, and suppressing at least media. they didn't take any money from us because we we're don't have monetized. Any. Imagine if we were doing this and then all our money went directly yeah. to CNN. I mean, that's pretty much what they're doing. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Which, like I said, if they monetize this fairly and gave us specifics to say, take this down or take that down, we'll give you a monetization. They took half our rent check away from the videos we've had. Okay. We had a video of 220,000 views right now. We had about yeah. four 20,000 views, five 20,000 view uh, uh, videos out there right now. Okay. That's monetization. That's money that we earned that we're not even getting. But all yeah. we want right now is specifics. We deserve specifics on what to do and what the people can do and what we can show them. So, right. Yeah, and I mean, we're trying to play by their game, but their game is really rigged. So it's kind of like a model of the DNC, right? Oh, and I wanted to announce yes, on Thursday, I'm not positive about the time, but hopefully during the day, sometime maybe around 2 p.m., I will update you guys, but I'm going to have uh, Serena, Vic uh, Serena Vickers to talk about how they are already pretty much cheating Bernie via the pledge delegates. And we're going to be talking about that. She is a DNC kind of insider. Yeah. And I will be live streaming that too. Hopefully. I'm going to be hopefully, well, I know I can do it via uh, Viva Bernie. So it's definitely going to be from there and uh, the combo couch because I can at least do that on Facebook. But we will at least release it on YouTube if we can't live stream it directly. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for Thank your support. You so much. We love you. We appreciate you. We'll be back tomorrow on Facebook. We'll see what happens. We'll get right back on the horse, even if they try to do this again. So yes. Thank you for supporting us. And thank you for supporting Indepe independent media for Pasta Jardula. And Fiorella Isabel. Johnny Tsunami. Night, guys. Combo out. Drink wine. <laughs>